Treasurer, I would also like to pass on my condolences to Sir John Kerr's wife and family and lament the fact that he died, uh, a controversial figure, uh, in what has become generally recognised as a tragic completion of, of a, a very promising career. Um, the Leader of the Opposition has just made a very partisan and militant speech, without which I probably wouldn't have entered, entered the, uh, spoken on the condolence motion, but I think a few things need to be said after his remarks. And he wasn't here in those times, and one needed to be here in those times to understand the ambience of the events and the sequence of the events. But the first thing to say is Sir John Kerr was a person of substance, and uh, he was very interested in public affairs and public life. He's like a lot of frustrated people of quality. They wanted to be in public life, but never ever made the jump into public life would never quite take the chance. He was such a person. He was always, dally, was always a dalliance at the edge of public affairs. And uh, he became Governor General on the recommendation of the former Prime Minister, Gough Whitlam, because he was known to him and known also his interest in public life and public affairs. And uh, it was with that, I think, that the government of the day had great expectation of him at least having a role in public life, a role which otherwise had been denied to him over the course of his career, not that it had been a, a public life, a life without distinction, because his service uh, in the New South, as a Chief Justice in New South Wales and, uh, uh, and uh, as a, uh, a barrister of note, <coughs> was, um, was, uh, he, had a he was a very well-regarded person, and particularly, I think as the Prime Minister said earlier, legally, um, in all quarters, and he had a reasonably close affinity to the Labor movement. That's why he was trusted by the Labor Party. Now, the fact of the matter was, uh, the Labor Party makes the political heroes of this country, and when they, people cross it, they wear the crosses it puts upon them. And whether it's Billy Hughes, whether it, no, that's true. Whether it's Billy Hughes, Order. whether it's Order. Billy Hughes or it's Joe Lyons, that is that is the truth of it. And he. He has worn the admonition of the Labor Party, and that's what you're really talking about now. Now, the fact is, Order. he did it for one reason. He deceived his Prime Minister. He didn't tell him he was prepared to sack him. He didn't tell him he was prepared to sack him. Now, I was at Government House with the then Prime Minister on the last time he saw Sir John Kerr in a meeting of three, for an Executive Council meeting, to appoint the Chairman of the Darwin Reconstruction Authority. And it was a meeting which was filled with bonhomie, uh, cordiality and, and, and the like. And uh, as we left and walked down that long corridor at Government House, uh, the Prime Minister was uh, saying things complimentary to the Governor-General. And uh, as we left, uh, the Prime Minister intimated to me that the Governor-General was a very proper person who would observe the constitutional position and constitutional prerogatives, including telling the Prime Minister what he intended for him. Because had the Prime Minister known that he intended to deceive him and dismiss him, another course of action would be available to him. That is the, the Kerr, uh, nub, nub of Sir John Kerr's problem uh, with uh, the Labor movement and those who support it, and it will be forever. It's a sad thing for him, but it's the facts. Now, Mr Speaker, uh, like anyone who's made a contribution to this country, they are to be admired. And in a personal sense, he came from not privileged circumstances and he surmounted them and he was a person of substance. But in the end, one's got to follow that substance with integrity. It was a lack of integrity in politically doing with the Prime Minister he didn't have and he suffered history's admonition as a result. The Honourable Leader.